Now, as you can see, this is a very noisy Volkswagen GTI. We'll start it up. You can easily hear the noise it's making. The GDI engines have a tendency of carboning up, and you get a lot of engine noise as the carbon builds up. Things aren't lubricated right. You hear rattling. A lot of times they start burning oil, and here's why. In order for engines to get better gas mileage, all cars use lower tension piston rings these days. We rebuild engines, you had to get a piston. You had to clamp it down, put it on top of the block, and then hammer it in with wood and a hammer, because it's so tight. The pistons were tight, they had very high tension rings, so they were tight and they sealed good. But of course, more friction, worse gas mods. So they all have low tension springs. You can push those in with your bare hand. If you ever rebuild one of those, you can grab the rings with your fingers, you can push the whole thing in. You don't need tools, you don't need a hammer and wood. That's less pressure. They don't seal as well, and as they age, if oil gets clogged in there, they'll stick inside the pistons. The rings won't come out because they don't have much tension, you'll burn a lot of oil. Now, this may sound crazy. We spent over a million bucks and eight years figuring out how to get rid the carbon inside the engine. They say the carbon inside the engine with the oil is different than the carbon that's made by burning gasoline. This pours right into your engine oil. That baby's on there tight. Either that or I'm getting old. Pour the engine oil. We're gonna see if it really works. The whole can. And now we're gonna run it at a fast idle for about 15 minutes. We'll idle at about 2,000 RPMs for about 15 minutes. Now I've read about phenomenal results, but I might as well as be from Missouri, because I say show me. This is gonna test this system out good. And as usual, nobody's paying me for this. This is just a test. If it doesn't work, I'll show you. The engine will be just as noisy as it was before. Maybe it'll be even noisier, I don't know. We're gonna run it for 15 minutes. Then, like they say on a can, change the oil and filter because all the carbon's gonna be in the oil and in the filter. Put in new oil, we'll see what it sounds like. And interestingly enough, even though I put in the engine oil, I can smell it coming out of the tailpipe. That shows the engine and the exhaust, they're not perfectly sealed. The engine oil, should not be coming out fumes of the exhaust. That shows piston rings and stuff are worn. We're gonna see if this clears some of it up. I do have to say over the years, I've seen a lot of snake oil products, but after testing out their fuel additive, I was rather impressed by that. The same guys in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now I've known Bernie Thompson quite some time at Automotive Test Solutions. As far as I'm concerned, the guy's almost as crazy as me, but his partner is a computer whiz. Between the testing and him coming up with ideas, I can't wait to see what this oil cleaner does, especially on a Volkswagen. Obviously, rings are worn because you can smell the stuff burning out the back. You still gotta wait 15 minutes though at a fast idle. But I do have to say, I asked Bernie, I said, Bernie, how come only 15 minutes? He says, doesn't take forever, but in that short period of time, the engine starts idling faster. I got it set with the throttle holder. I had it at 2,000. It went up to 4,000. That shows me that it's clean and something because it's freer moving now. For the same throttle, it went up. I had to set it back to 2,000. I can hear it going up a little higher now too. I don't know, I think the cleaner's is doing something. But as for sound, is it gonna make the engine quieter because of that? Let's find out. Now shut the engine off, we're gonna change the oil, but this is really hot, so get a fan. 15, 20 minutes so you don't burn yourself when you're changing the oil. So it's cooling off, we jack the car up. Up we go. And this is a really low car, so we need a jack stand. So get our oil pan to crawl under. So we get a 19 millimeter socket. And out comes the old oil. Germans really put long screws in these things. There we go. There's the old dirty oil. And it is dirty. As you can see in my hand, that's dirty oil. All the carbon and stuff is getting in this oil that we're changing out. Drained out yard's gonna get a couple of drips. We got a new gasket on here. We'll put that back on. And of course, we have to change the oil filter. It's one of these stupid crap box plastic ones with the paper filter inside. You need a big socket for this. Okay, now we can do it by hand. I really hate these ones that have paper inside. They're such a pain in the butt. But that's the Germans for you. Plastic junk. There we go. Here's the new filter and gasket. So we put the new filter and gasket in. Tighten it up. First, you tighten it by hand. Then you get the wrench. Because you want it snug so it doesn't come loose and leak. There we go. Tight. 
That's it. Look at that filthy black oil. Seems to got a lot of carbon out. Now we'll fill it up with oil. In this case, it holds 4.9 quarts of 5W30. So in it goes. Nice clean oil. Then we'll put the top back on. Move the jack stand and let it down. Jack out of the way. Now comes the moment of truth. They're going to start it up. There you are. Get set. Go! So let's compare that to the original sound. Now yes, this is a Volkswagen GTI with well over 100,000 miles on it. It's gonna make noise. It's been abused in the past. Guys drive them hard. And they're Volkswagens. They get loud as they age. I'd never buy one personally. That's my choice. I fix cars. I don't like a noisy car. I like nice quiet Toyotas. If you compare that last noise after the cleaning to the first real noisy one, you can definitely hear there's less mechanical noise. There's less wear going on. Good use these guys told me about. And I got to test it out when I find one. Is in those late model GM V8s that burn a lot of oil. GM says it's normal to burn a quart of oil every thousand miles or so. Not normal to me. But with those low tension piston rings. If you don't change the oil enough. They get dirty. They stick. You're going to burn oil because they're not expanding and sealing right. When I get one of those that burns oil. I'm going to do the same thing. Then I'm going to let them drive the car 5,000 miles. And we'll see if it went down because the guys at Automotive Test Solutions said they did it with one of their wife's car. And it went from burning a quart of oil every eight or nine hundred miles to not even half a quart between oil changes. Well, here's an oddball one. We got a 2007 Toyota Corolla and it doesn't run right. It accelerates very sluggish. And the weird thing is he took it to various dealers and they all said they can't find what's wrong with it. So let's see if they were screwing them around or whether it's something that even I can't figure out. Now theoretically it's had spark plugs, air filters, everything. I don't, I don't trust anybody. But I'm going to start by checking a battery and alternator. Many problems can be created by lack of power from the alternator or battery. So cheapest battery you can get from AutoZone. Check the old battery. Since it's not a very expensive of one who knows now it says 520 cold cranking amps so set it up for that in vehicle battery post top post regular cold cranking amp got to put it way down to 520 and let's see what it says good battery okay now we'll check the alternator so start it up <laughs> That's working fine. So we know it's getting correct voltage to everything. Now let's just take a general overview of the engine. Make sure they weren't lying about the air filter. Now oh, that's clean. Okay, all the hoses are hooked up. There's no loose hoses anywhere. That's all on. So we'll take the stupid beauty cover off. Everything looks pretty normal so far. So let's check out a spark plug. We'll take the number one out. That's the one in the front of the engine. They don't give you enough working room, so you gotta pull the wire off. And that's always fun on these. You gotta squeeze and pull. There we go. All right, that's out of the way. Now we'll get a spark plug socket, pull out the spark plug, and we'll examine it. Pretty much normal color, gray. There's no soot or anything on it. So we'll measure with feeler gauges. It's 44 thousandths of an inch. If the gap was wrong, it can run wrong. But it's gapped right and it's running fine. So there's nothing wrong with that. So we'll put this back together. Nothing obvious showed wrong. So we'll plug in the scan tool. See what it says. It's reading all the information now. It knows what it is. So we'll do a network scan. This baby's only got 118,000. That's not much for a Toyota Corolla. Now it does have one failed module. Let's see what it is. It has a code for failed engine immobilizer system. Well, that can't be making the car not accelerate right. That's a mobilizer system. That in the key, the chip in the key has to match the computer. If it doesn't, the car will not start. It starts, it just has no acceleration. So that's not the problem. So we'll switch over to live data. In this case, you're better than a computer. The computer hasn't found any failure, but it doesn't accelerate right. The computer's only going to trip code. Sometimes it has to go as much as 25% plus or minus the normal data, which, hey, if it's 23%, you can feel it running poor, but it won't trip any code. We're going to start looking at the data. Short term, it's subtracting fuel, but long term, it's adding fuel. It's odd. There's a fuel trim that's kind of squirrely. Let's try to figure out why. Look at the spark advance. Rev it up a little. Well, that's working. Goes up when you accelerate and goes back down when you go back to idle. 
taking a while to get back down but that's because this i got all this data and the data isn't going to refresh fast enough in this case the math sensor 2.03 grams per second how you really want to test it is turn the ac off put it in drive and see what it does now it's idling it's saying 2.39 grams per second 2.34 this is a 1.8 liter engine it should be reading closer to 2 or 1.8 than 2.34 now one thing that can cause loss of acceleration and weird fuel trims is a clogged catalytic converter so we got a gauge we're going to take out an oxygen sensor and see if it's got too much pressure if it does the catalytic converter is starting to clog up now as we look down conveniently there's an oxygen sensor right here we got an oxygen sensor socket and we're going to remove it they're usually pretty stuck so i'm going to use a real long bar extension bar to get it loose there it goes but we can unscrew it take the socket off now put it up here we'll unscrew it and you can see the sensor's pretty new they tried a new sensor and it didn't fix but did they test it i don't know we're going to put in an oxygen sensor tester then we'll tighten the socket to make sure it's sealed right you gotta have it tight or you won't get the right pressure reading now it's nice and snug you can screw the gauge in and now you can see the gauge is hooked up and we'll start the car start it up give it a few revs and we see it has no pressure at all now we'll rev it up and see if it changes As you can see the gauge moved a little but it means nothing if you have two and a half three four five pounds pressure the cat's clogged up but this stays pretty much at almost no pressure at all meaning the exhaust system is free and it's not restricted so it's not there we'll remove the gauge and the socket adapter then i'll use my magnet to pull it out i use the magnet so i don't burn my finger so i'll blow into this one and you can see it moves i blew in it so the gauge is working fine so now we're bringing out my big boy my otc high level scanner see if it gives us more information we can use since the math sensor's already been changed and then it's got an ipidenso one the correct one for the car it's not that he said he had the math sensor change it made no difference it still ran poorly let's see what bosch has to say go to diagnostics auto id i'm gonna do all the mode 9 data and mode 6 data it's a much more specific machine so we get a lot better information start it up and do data stream since we're having problems with the running we're going to do engine transmission now we'll start with all data items just to get a general overview now as we look the long-term fuel trim it's adding fuel so long term it is running rich even though now the short term it's actually subtracting a tiny amount of fuel the ignition advance is 14 that's normal we'll rev it up goes back up and then we let go goes back down you know it's on a previous scan tool it took a while for the ignition timing to go back down because it's a cheaper tool this bosch one is much better it refreshes quicker hence when we took our foot off the gas it went back to normal timing like it's supposed to fast not the car that's doing it that was a scan tool differential looking at the rest of the stuff got to refresh the screen now and we can see it idle it's 1.96 two grams per second that's normal at idle now when we bring it up to about 2500 rpm in new it should read about seven grams per second we'll get it up to 2500 there it is so it's reading right there i got it down a little it's hard to keep it up but that's working it's going up and down like it should now that is a new toyota nip and denso mass airflow sensor but you can't trust anything i tested it that's work so let's check the air fuel sensor the monitor sensor two bank one sensor two bank one sensor one all right we're going to check that stuff as you can see the one that we checked before the air fuel sensor bank one sensor one that's has volume Voltage, but the bank one sensor two it's not changing at all there it is it goes zero it seems to be lazy rev it up it's not it's moving like the other one eventually does so we might have a lazy oxygen sensor but let's go further now looking at the fuel system we got a long-term fuel trim it's adding so it's running slightly lean now it shows no misfires at all so this is a real quandary it's running just slightly lean i'm guessing the fuel injectors are just kind of old and worn a lot of times you can clean them gonna try some of this royal purple throw it in a gas tank and see what happens got the nice funnel so it fits right in so in this case the funnel got stuck so you gotta stick your finger in and then pull it out well isn't that just the cat's meow there 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 it goes you can always wiggle them out i'm gonna start her up go for a good half hour of drive and we'll leave it in second gear so it'll rev higher and burn quicker we'll let a ticket about say 
four tires and RPMs for about half an hour of driving. Well, we've driven around now, so let's check the fuel trim now. And you can see the long-term fuel trim has gone to 0.8%. That means it's only adding a tiny amount of fuel instead of about 5% it was adding before. So, it's fixing it. Now, that was only a half hour drive. As you drive longer, it can even do a better job. Dirty fuel injectors seem to be one of the biggest problems in this vehicle. Now you know, something as dumb as slightly dirty fuel injectors that don't spray enough fuel or don't make the perfect conical shape can make your car hesitate when you try to take off. Okay, is it possible to get an F-250 that actually runs decently for a couple thousand dollars used? Here's living proof. Now, yeah, it's going to have a few dings, bent parts. Yeah, the paint's not going to be perfect. Still pretty solid. With all the tool sides on, built in. There's a reasonable amount of money just there. And a big serious bumper. Nice big bed. Has dual gas tanks. Now you can get a brand new one of these with this Redding body for 58,000 bucks. They're still making these things. And yeah, this is an old truck. It's a 1996. Crank her up. You can hit that V8. Of course, it's a V8 engine, but it's a 5.8 liter 351 Windsor. Made in Windsor, Ontario. They are excellent engines. Back in the day, everybody wanted these engines to put in their Mustangs to soup up. The 351 Windsor has a place in history, and it can last forever. And yes, they are incredible gas hogs. You got a big old F-250 work truck. You're carrying tools. You're not going to get gas mileage. You want to get big gas mileage? Go buy a new one. It's still not going to get the great gas mileage either. They're big heavy trucks. Turn the key on and baby's got 269,000. It's closing on 300,000 miles. Sure the seat's got holes down to the foam. The dash is cracked. It only has crank windows but they still crank. Has the cool vents though like I grew up with as a kid. But now comes the big question. Does the AC still work? Well let's turn it on. Man it's freezing cold. The compressor. It's spinning, and more importantly, it's not making any odd AC compressor noises. It's still in really good shape. Now the engine, you can hear it's got a couple exhaust leaks. You don't expect this on a truck. A lot of guys won't even fix it. But that cold AC, ah, I am impressed. After all, this is a 1997 F-250. When they say heavy duty, they mean it. Hey, it took this giant bash and it's still rolling down the road. It just looks like it's making kind of a grimace. And as we go underneath, so high you don't need a jack on this baby. You got surface rust on the frame. Frame is still rock solid. And sure, the exhaust system after the catalytic converter is now completely gone. You can hook the muffler that fell off back on if you want. Here's gas tank number one. And as we go to the back, here's gas tank number two. And again, you see superficial rust, but the metal's still solid as can be. They used to build them like rock. To me, it looks like it's still the original differential, and it works perfectly fine. There's no noise from the pinion gears inside. The bearings are fine, no humming. These things were solid built back in 1997. These beefy leaf springs, that are still in good shape, although they have superficial rust. This thing's still set up to carry a lot of weight. It still has the original double-walled exhaust coming off the engine. Look how they built them. This thing hasn't rusted. It's still solid after all those years. Gigantic disc brakes in the front. This is just rear wheel drive. The front wheels just roll down the road. It's not 4x4. Four four. Now I did notice when driving it, it shifts a little bit high. Now with this mileage, truthfully, that's generally the lifespan of the transmissions in these things. It goes, but getting a little bit funky. So I'm going to try a trick I've tried for years. Now I can tell the fluid's just been changed because it's got a new gasket in the bottom and the fluid's clean. But I'm going to try an old trick. My little vacuum pump's handy. I just stick it in and suck a cord out. Down in the transmission check tube. That's the bottom. Now I'll pull a little bottom off. We'll suck a cord of fluid out. Here it comes. You can see the fluid's flowing in now. We'll pump out about a quart. Okay, we pumped out as much as we needed to. Now, we're going to put in a Lucas Stop Slip. This stuff is often amazing for American vehicles. We'll just take our pump hose out. You knew it was going to squirt me in the face, right? <laughs> 
Stick a funnel in, pour the whole bottle in. Now this stuff is really thick. It's sealed so it doesn't go bad. You gotta rip the seal off, which of course doesn't want to come off. That's always how it goes. They seal them too sealed. There we go, finally. Now we just pour the whole bottle in. This stuff is thick, so it can take some time to pour the whole bottle in. Tough and better to let it run as you add it, and it'll go in faster. And if you run out of patience, you can heat this up in a pan of boiling water. It'll get thinner and pour faster. That's what I do in the winter. This is going slow enough. I hate to see what it's like in January or February. But eventually the bottle's empty. We'll take the first spin. There we go. The seatbelt still works. Does the horn blow? Amazing. That's a typical Ford. You can hear the power steering groan. They all groan on these. There it goes groaning away. An old truck, it has a lot of rattles, but it still goes down the road. Take it out in the country here a little. There goes that Windsor. Mind you, the front end needs some work. It pulls to the left, and the tires are all just junk. They dry rotted, they're worn on evenly. I'd start with new tires and an alignment and see where that goes. But the engine and training are still good. It may be out, but it still rumbles down the road. And I do have to say, I'm absolutely amazed how much smoother it shifts once I put that Lucas stop slip in. A lot of times you gotta wait till 250 to 300 miles to drive them, but this one, geez, I put it in. It's not slipping anymore. Yeah, it makes a lot of rattle noise because the front tires are worn out, but it's running a nice temperature, not getting hot, and yeah, the check engine lights on. Half of that's because part of the exhaust system isn't even there anymore, but it still runs good. Not sure. The turn signals don't work anymore, and the muffler fell off, but it's a clean break, and you can see somebody already welded one piece on. You can always weld another one on, but heck, the AC still works. It's still a pretty darn good old work truck that you could put a little time and energy in and have a really reliable truck. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.